Android 8.1 Oreo contains a targeted set of enhancements, including optimizations for Android Go and a new neural networks API. We've also included a few smaller enhancements in response to user and developer feedback. Android 8.1 includes memory optimizations for Android Go, hardware that has one gigabyte or less of RAM. For example, notification listener service and condition provider service will not be supported on low RAM devices. In addition, we've added new hardware feature constants so you can now target the distribution of your apps and APK splits to normal or low RAM devices if they're running Android 8.1 and later. We've been working hard to bring on-device machine intelligence to mobile with features such as Now Playing and Google Lens. The new Neural Networks API lays the foundation for our developer community to build accelerated on-device applications of machine learning, including image recognition and prediction. The Neural Networks API runtime is designed to efficiently distribute the computation workload across available on-device processors, including dedicated neural network hardware, graphics processing units, and digital signal processors. For devices that lack a specialized vendor driver or hardware, the runtime relies on optimized code to execute requests on the CPU. It's unlikely that most apps will use the Neural Networks API directly. They'll instead rely on a higher level machine learning framework such as TensorFlow Lite or Cafe2. TensorFlow Lite is Google's cross-platform open source framework designed to execute deep trained neural networks in mobile environments, and it's scheduled to be released soon, so make sure to stay tuned. We also are investing bringing the benefits of deep learning to more developers, so we intend to release a library to make common ML use cases easily available on mobile devices. Android 8.1 Oreo adds a new shared memory API. This new API enables the creation of an anonymous shared memory instance. You can mmap the shared memory object into a local byte buffer and read and write it like any other byte buffer. The memory protection can be controlled on the shared object. Since the shared memory object is parcelable, you can easily pass it to another process through AIDL. The remote process can then map any part of the memory it wants. And once access is no longer needed, just unmap the buffer. The shared memory API also supports interoperability with the NDK using a shared memory. We can mmap the FD and then read and write. It's a great way to share data between multiple processes, within a single app or even between apps. We've added some polish and refinement to Autofill. And most of the changes are on the Autofill service side. For example, the Save UI now supports custom descriptions. So when asking to save credit card data, the service can request the display of a logo, representing the type of credit card, the last four digits of the card number, and an expiration date. This helps the user understand exactly what is being saved. One minor change for apps that want to support Autofill is that Base Adapter and its derived classes, such as Array Adapter, now support setting Autofill options. This makes it easier to provide autofill data for simple custom adapters, such as one used to set credit card expiration dates. In Android 8.0, you would need to override the get autofill method options in the adapter. But now in 8.1, you can just call set autofill options. And in another helpful touch, the API 27 version of the support library of UCompat now wraps the autofill methods to make it easier to give hints to the autofill service, which you really should do. One more autofill note. Consider setting up an association between your app and your website. This allows the autofill service to share passwords between the two, whether you're on Android 8.0 or Android 8.1. Android 8.1 includes new APIs in the wallpaper manager to get the most representative colors from the current wallpaper. And the system UI and Pixel Launcher will adjust the colors they use based upon this API. If you've made a live wallpaper, you notify the wallpaper service whenever your colors change significantly, returning them in the onComputeColors method. We recommend using the utility functions within the wallpaper colors class to automatically select these colors from a representative bitmap or drawable. Some other changes you might be interested in. Edit text now returns an editable rather than a care sequence. Your app can determine how it responds to a known threat from the WebView implementation of the Safe Browsing API. The Media Metadata Retriever class has a new method, GetScaledFrameAtTime, that finds a frame near a given time position and returns a bitmap with the same aspect ratio as the source frame, but at the requested size. If you have any Pixel or Pixel 2 device, we support requesting A audio sharing mode exclusive in some cases, which provides reduced audio latency. Better yet, we've released a preview of the Oboe library, which allows applications to target A audio on API 26 Plus devices and OpenSL on previous versions of Android to get the best latency with a simplified API surface in a compatible way. If you have a Pixel 2, you'll notice a developer setting in Android 8.1 for Camera HAL HDR+. This enables you to test an early version of HDR+, with Pixel Visual Core, Google's first custom-designed coprocessor for consumer products. Note that HDR+, will only be enabled for specific camera and camera 2 API options. 
If you have an eligible Pixel or Nexus device, you can enroll it in Android Beta to get the latest update, but we also have Android 8.1 emulator images. This gives you the opportunity to fix any issues and update your app before consumers get their hands on 8.1. You can find out more about everything we covered, including the developer preview program here. Happy coding!